Greetings. Today I'd like to do a quick little look at the new SSD handle from Condor Blue. This is a handle that uses the ProBlade SSD mags. If you've uh, watched my previous videos, I've done one on the transport of the label upside down, sorry on the transport, as well as their four bay Thunderbolt dock. And I've been really pleased with this system. I use it for things like what you are seeing recorded right now with this Blackmagic video assist being recorded into an external SSD that happens to be a SanDisk Pro Blade. And what you might have noticed from that is at the moment I've got it, the, the, the transport mounted on the frame or cage for the, the video assist using a generic USB battery bank holder. Um, this is not the tiniest device, right? If you look at the edge on, the mag is half the width of the total device. And this side of the device, if you look at any of the uh, teardowns, is basically where the logic board is that converts NVMe into USB-C uh, 3.2 by 2. So it can do up to 20 gigabits a second, which is great in terms of like ingesting to a computer in the field. But as far as I'm aware at the moment, there are no cameras that actually do 20 gigabit USB. They're all either five or 10. But it's great, makes it really easy to record on these things. You don't have to worry about, worry about thermals, even though it gets a little warm. It doesn't seem to slow down or throttle too much, uh, even when doing extended recordings. And so I've been wondering you know, if you look at some of the other SSDs, there are companies who've made accessories to mount those things to a cage and they're dedicated form factor. So they're much more small, you know, much smaller and compact, right? And I was hoping that somebody would do that for these SSD mags. And I was assuming they would do it by making a holder that's sort of dedicated to the transport. Well, Condor Blue, as far as I'm aware, is the first company that has made an accessory specifically for the SSD line. And they kind of went above and beyond a custom mount optimized for the size of the transport from SanDisk themselves. Instead, what they've done is they've made a handle that has an integrated um, dock, if you will, for these ProBlade SSDs. And so let's see what we got in here. This was announced during NAB 2023. They started taking pre-orders during NAB 2023, and I ordered one immediately, the first day that they announced it, because like I say, I'm really liking this SSD ProBlade ecosystem I've invested a fair bit in it. I own a number of these mags and a couple of the transports plus the dock, and I am all in. I think this thing is wonderful. So let's see what we got in the box, right? So take off the cover, and um, first thing we've got is trademark awful blue, Condor blue cable. Uh, I ordered the black version of the handle, and I had really hoped that they would ship a black USB cable with it because I get that Condor Blue is their branding, but a neon blue cable that just shows up in reflections is not great. But it's a USB-C cable, and so presumably one can find other replacements. That's so far, like my biggest drawback to this thing. We have a sticker that will go in the trash. I'm not a sticker person. We have a little 
Um, QR code for getting started. We have a piece of foam that we take out. And so now we can see the handle and then the, the mount for the handle is a separate piece. So pull the little mount out and then we'll pull the handle out. And then they also give you a little Allen wrench. And that's basically it for what's in the box. They give you an Allen wrench because the the, the mount for the handle is basically NATO rail based, right? So you've got a NATO rail that runs the full length of this handle with stoppers to keep it from sliding all the way off. And then you attach, you know, so if we loosen this a bit, there it popped on, well now we can tighten it so it will go up, it'll go down. And again, you know, now you can tighten it fully in place. You have, and then this here is another NATO that will then clamp onto your cage or whatever. And they give you the Allen wrench because you got two screws. So right now the orientation is that you would have it facing front to back, like you're going to put it on the top of the cage. But if you wanted to put it on the side of the cage, so like, director's monitor or whatever, you can loosen this, rotate it, and then now you could have this as a side handle. I will say that the feel of this is actually pretty nice. It's got these grooves that give it a little bit of texture. It has on the front, you've got a cold shoe with a little safety button to prevent it from accidentally whatever you put in there coming out. You've also got an air, you know, a um, screw mount with airy locating pins. And then the front is also a little NATO rail. So you could mount a whatever on the front of it, including like a monitor uh, mount that uses a NATO rail connector. And then the USB connector is in here such that when you have a NATO on the front, it also acts as something that keeps the USB cable locked in place so that it can't accidentally come out. And then the drive Oops, it's upside down. So that's one thing uh, is when you use the transport, there is no way to put the drive in upside down. And this is allowing the drive to go almost all the way in before, you know, the physical mount for the, the front of the drive. It's, but we'll put it in the right way. Now it goes all the way in and it's got a little bit of a friction snap there. So like if you're using this in director's monitor mode, right? You know, one concern I have is, have is whether or not, you know, you could accidentally have this get dislodged and pop out. And that seems to be possible. It's just a little friction thing. It would have been cool if they had extended the handle a little bit so that they could have had like a little safety release to prevent you from accidentally popping the mag out when it's in a vertical orientation like this but if you're just using it in the top handle orientation yeah that's probably fine there is also a little window where you can see which mag you have installed well reality is, is sandisk really only puts sandisk it doesn't have the label there but if you added your own label on top you could see it through the window because it is housing the drive, you know, the one thing that you can't do is put a bunch of mounting points on the handle, which is what you tend to see with most mount handles, right? They'll have 
two, three, maybe sometimes four, depending on how long the handle is, like three eighths, sixteens with a um, with airy locator pins on the top. So you know, if you've got an easy rig or whatever, you know, you can easily bolt it to this. So the only thing you have is that one, and that actually looks like a one quarter twenty rather than three eighths, sixteen. So all machined, I'm assuming aluminum, um, feels pretty good. You know, this is not going to break real easily. So now the thing I figured we would do, as I said, the transport is rated for 20 gigabit. Most people don't really have a 20 bit, 20 gigabit connected capable computer at this point. If, and if you really need to, the speed to do offloads, you know, get the Thunderbolt dock, which can do, you know, 40 gigabit, technically 32 because eight for video, but whatever. Either way, that's going to be your fastest access to these mags. But they do say that it does do 10 gigabit over USB. And I figure let's hook it up to the Mac and just make sure that that is indeed what we are getting when using this because the idea with this is not only is it really convenient to have these mags but these mags can be quite you know you can get a four terabyte version of this not all cameras support four terabyte as i understand it some only go up to two terabytes supported but they have one two and four terabyte mags and if you're doing high bit rate recording stuff so prores raw or you know, be raw out of a URSA 12K or whatever, this thing will keep up or should be able to keep up just fine, right? So let's give it a quick look on the computer. We can see that the drive has shown up. Come over here. We can select it and we'll say go. All right, took it a bit for it to show up, but that is basically getting around 10 gigabit, not quite. Um, it's going down with each success, subsequent iteration. And so now it'll start doing the right sequential test. I will say that when I use the transport, it basically gets maximum USB 10 gigabit speed, but they're using a custom SanDisk designed board to do this. So the writes are a little bit faster, which is actually what's most important because you're main, mainly going to be using this device for capture and while you could then take it and hook it up to your computer if you didn't want to buy a transport or a dock you, to do ingest i think mostly it's going to live on your capture device and it's still fairly quick for ingest it's just not going to be as fast as the transport or the the, the thunderbolt dock I did eight gigabit tests with five iterations and see that whatever their USB interface is a, from JMicron. And again, the disk is formatted right now as Mac journaled, because again, I tend to use them with the video assist most often. If I hold the handle, I do not feel it warming up at all surrounded by a big metal big chunk of metal right so hopefully that means heat dissipation will work pretty well and not be an issue for extended recordings yeah with every iteration that gets just slightly worse when averaging out over multiple runs and we're done and we'll do it also with Black Magic. Open. 
start. There's always a little bit of discrepancy between black magic and the amorphous dismark. Not quite sure why. So you can see it's doing pretty pretty well, pretty consistently in the over 900 megabytes a second, which should be fine for basically any current codec, right? And so we'll stop that and go ahead and eject. And like I say, I'm holding on to it and I do not feel any increase in warmth. So that was a quick first look. Well, let me Loosen this up a little bit. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, so discovery that if you take it, make it too loose, the handle, the screw comes off of the handle. So that's not great. And I am not going to get this onto the cage without taking the other stuff off because you're going to have to slide it in from the side and I can't slide it in from the side because there's enough, not enough clearance. So I will have to you know, tighten this back down for a bit so it doesn't end up getting lost. So that's unfortunate that you can't do the just drop it on from the top to a device. Um, the jaw does not open enough or the, it opens, but actually because the tightening piece is part of the jaw, even if you loosened it all the way and removed the piece that fell out with it this far open, you, yeah, you're never going to get it on from the top because you still have pieces of this that are fixed in place. So that's a little unfortunate. It would have been really nice if you could actually just drop down from the top. But at any rate, that's a quick look at this new SSD, SanDisk SSD handle from Condor Blue. Uh, it's about $200. But yeah, I think this is pretty cool. It's definitely going to be, in many ways, more ergonomic than trying to mount one of these transports onto your device. Like I say, I use um, a generic USB power bank holder to hold the transport on the video assist cage. And then I don't actually have a, uh, a mount screwed in for uh, when I use this with the Allen & Heath SQ5 mixer for multi-track recording. The SQ5 is another device that only supports up to two terabytes. So in this one, I actually have a two terabyte module. Uh, my other modules are four because you can never have enough space when you're recording, right? So let me know if you have any questions down in the comments and I will try to get back to you as soon as I can. And thank you for watching. Thanks. Cheers.